The scene begins as Metal Sonic sits on a workbench, a recollection of his last interaction with Eggman before being defeated as Neo Metal Sonic. How disgraceful. Did you honestly think you could triumph over me? I wish to prove myself. I wish to be better, to rule, dominate. Is this not what you made me for? Yes, but I never gave you the drive to overthrow me. You were to follow my every command to the letter. I am your master, Metal Sonic, and you know that I am to be the true master of this world. You also gave me your drive, your vision. I could also have made the world in your image, in my own way, to prove I am the one true Sonic the Hedgehog. Eggman's agitation was unlike anything he had seen before. Being stuck in his own prison dealt a horrible bruise on his ego, and being put there by his greatest creation? It was a sight that even that of Chaos's and Omega's rebellion could not compare. His greatest creation had turned against him. No! Only I can rule the world, not you. Not some scrap I put together on Little Planet to outmatch that half-wit hedgehog. But I guess I should have known better. To have modeled you after that prickly pain. You've become no better. Only a mediocre machine that thinks he can best me. Me! The greatest scientific mind in the world. I suppose that's the only thing that you will ever have in common with that blue buff. Boom. Because you're just a brain-dead, bolt-headed pile of junk who thinks he's Sonic! Well, guess what, poser? You will never be Sonic! Metal stared at the doctor in horror and anguish. N no I... I was built to... surpass... to eclipse him. I am... No! No! Metal Sonic leaps off the workbench and bolts out of the room. Only too late does Eggman realize his mistake. Metal! WAIT! Metal continues to fly away, until he arrives in the present day, where the machine stands alone in Soliana, surveying the clock tower. I'll prove you wrong, Doctor. I'll prove them all wrong. I will surpass Sonic. I will become the true Sonic. And when I do... Metal was unable to finish his thought. He stood up, cracked his mechanical knuckles, and leapt off the building, flying into the air and landing on the clockwork tower roof as he began to survey the area. The past several months had not been kind to the Super Badnik, as his once shiny blue metal had began to dull and chipped in places, while his chrome appendages were no longer shiny and sleek, but now dull and gray and dented in places he had faced off against his fellow Badniks, clearly intent on bringing him home. While he was intent on breaking them down for parts, his lens had taken a decent hit for a black arm during the invasion. Having run into them on his way to an abandoned egg base, he needed to go to for a fresh stock of chaos drives in order to keep himself going. Keeping them in a bag he had fastened to his shoulder, to evade the prying eyes of the public and to avoid being tracked by his enemies, he had stolen clothing from villages he passed in order to keep himself hidden, unseen, always changing out of new garments every week or so, so to his avoid being traced. Adorned in a black cloak, Metal broke into the clock tower, sleuthing around so as to not alert any guards. Scanning around the best he could, he continued on till he arrived at the altar room and began to expect the wall. There should be a way in here somewhere. Just need to find it. Then I'll be able to claim an idol of Solaris before Eggman and Sonic ever know I was. What you up to there? Shit. Metal turned around to see Amy Rose. The pink hedgehog looked surprised to see the mechanical menace after so long. Metal Sonic? What are you doing here? Metal said nothing. The girl before him had come quite a long way from being the mere damsel that he snatched up as a little extra incentive to make Sonic come to him. The universe was cruel indeed, as in his darkest days, Amy was better off than him in every respect. She stood there, empowered and bolstered by past hardships, while he was merely a shell of his former glory. It was agonizing, painful, rage boiled in his processors as he stared down his adversary's number one fan. I could ask the same of you. The clock tower is off limits to civilians. Why? I thought it only helped to tell the time. Silence. That's just the dribble that the locals about to hide the truth. Now, get.
Get out of my sight! Why would I do that exactly? A cold aura appears around Metal Sonic's hand. Little snowflakes appear in and out of existence around him as Metal looks at Amy with a cold, serious, heartless stare. Because I'm not asking. Amy grins a little bit. Deep down, she was hoping for this. After being humiliated by Metal Sonic on Little Planet years ago, she had wanted to have a true rematch with him. Sure, she had fought him when he went Neo, but that was different. Now it was just the two of them. She gets out her hammer. Well, I'm not leaving until you tell me what's really here. Damn it! Metal Sonic had seen Amy's strength while battling her as Metal Overlord. Even though he could probably outdo her easily at 100%, he was nowhere near close to his full strength now. This was a big risk to take, but he couldn't let himself lose this idol. Whatever it was would make him even stronger than the Metal Overlord, even stronger than Devil Doom. So be it. Metal Sonic charges at Amy. Amy quickly swings her hammer at him, but he activates his thrusters on his chest to push him back. The icy aura on his arm then crystallizes as he punches at Amy. Amy bends out of the way. Metal's arm just barely goes by her head. She then pushes him back and swings her hammer up. It connects with his jaw, forcing him upwards. Metal's boosters prevent him from hitting the ground though and keep him stagnant. He wipes his bottom jaw and places his foot on the ground. He dashes at Amy with his claws. Amy jumps back, but Metal activates a golden boost and scratches her across the right cheek. Amy then kicks Metal on the bottom of his lower left leg, knocking him onto his knee. Amy swings her hammer at him. Metal then grabs onto it with his left hand, and he creates a crystal at just the right time. It shatters and knocks him back a little, but he holds his ground. You will not get in my way. Leave. Now. Just tell me what's behind this door and I'll go. The room that Metal and Amy are in resembles a temple of worship more than the inside of a clock. It's an empty tomb covered in stone walls. On each wall is an engraving of Soliana's history, but the true meaning of the hieroglyphics had long since faded. Amy points to the other door facing at the end of the room. It's extremely large, almost reaching the ceiling. That is of no import to you. Now leave before I tear you apart. Fat chance! Amy lowers her hammer yet again. Now get out of here! Amy runs at Metal again. Sparks come out of his body. She swings her hammer down at him, but he's able to stop with just one hand. He flicks his wrist up, pushing it back. Sparks continue to fly out of his body. How? Metal then punches Amy in the stomach, sending her back. Suddenly, Amy begins falling forward once again. Metal is just barely quick enough to block her hammer before sending her to the right. Odd. You're using your energy reserves to have more strength. Clever deduction. That is correct. There is nothing you can do to harm me, Rose. Well, I guess you would have been right about that four months ago. Amy then runs at Metal Sonic. He blocks her hammer again, but this time, when he brushes it back, it comes forward again. He blocks it more and more, but each time it comes back down instead of bouncing away, each time striking heavier than the last. Metal then grabs the edge of it and attempts to hold it in place, but Amy flings it upwards, throwing him over her in the process. He lands in a heap behind her. But I've grown a lot since then! I see that the Black Arm invasion improved your capabilities. Oh no, it wasn't the Black Arms. It was actually you and Sonic. Metal blazes forward. Before Amy can react, he punches her in the stomach, sending her back a little. But that backwards force converts forwards. Her hammer comes at him again. Metal then grabs it and begins to crystallize it. He tries to force it down, but Amy is somehow strong enough to pull it back up. Eventually, Metal's grip on it breaks, and she hits him in the chest with it. The sparks around his body disappear. You have force manipulation. Wow, glad to hear at least you'll pay enough attention to me to figure out my new ability. When a kinetic attack is applied to you, you are able to change its direction to one that would benefit you during that situation. Any battle that is dependent on strength would result in you as the victor because of this, as well as the ability to apply the continuous force on your own being. Yeah, I honestly wasn't thinking about any of that. Just like it because it makes me more acrobatic. What a mundane application of such an extraordinary power. Metal taps the point of the shoe into the floor behind him. There is one flaw to that power, however. If I hit you with enough consecutive blows, or one strike with immense power, I'll be able to take you out. Well, luckily for me, that's not going to happen. Pink sparkles orbit around Amy's hammer. Because you're not getting anywhere near me. Metal's body is then coated in an electric orange boost aura. This is your final warning. Leave now, or I will kill you! We'll see about that. Amy charges at Metal this time. Metal charges at her as well. Amy swings her hammer at the ground, launching her over Metal. She then turns around in midair. 
Metal quickly turns as well to meet her. Amy swings her hammer, but Metal catches it and rides it upwards with her, meeting her and then hitting her in the face. Amy is launched back from the blast. Metal gives her no time to get up and charges at her again. He starts clawing at her like an animal. Amy is able to throw herself to the side, but Metal is able to scratch her three times, once on the cheek, once on her arm, and once on her calf. She pushes herself up as Metal launches a barrage of crystals at her. Amy holds her hammer up to guard her. Each crystal shatters on the tip of her hammer. She tries to use the force to push her forward, but each force comes and goes quickly. She then goes to the side. Metal meets her there and attempts to charge his own strength, but Amy hits him in the face before he's able to. As he falls, he swipes at Amy's leg, causing her knee to buckle. She avoids tripping by sticking her right leg back and using her hammer to balance herself. Metal then launches himself off the ground at her with a fury. He charges both of his hands with electricity and prepares to hit her with full force. Amy then headbutts Metal before his arms can reach her. This cracks his visor, but a little bit of blood drips down Amy's nose from the impact. She brushes it away and pulls herself up. Metal pulls himself up as well. He begins boosting in circles around the room. Amy tries to follow him, but he just becomes a golden burst. As more and more electricity flares around her, several beams of energy leave Metal's body. Amy has to dance around the area to quickly dodge them before they hit her. Finally, in one motion, Metal breaks a cycle and blasts his energy-coated body at her. Even if Amy were to hit him with her hammer, with this much electricity around his body, her arms would be fried. Before they collide, though, the energy around Metal dissipates. It only takes one second, but suddenly, the output stops. Amy wastes no time with the confusion. She then hits him as hard as she can with her hammer. Metal Sonic then collides with the door into the crypt, breaking through it entirely. <sighs> okay. Whoa! Amy walks into the room through the hole that Metal Sonic made. Metal Sonic stays on the ground. <laughs> See, that wasn't so hard, was it? This is only a temporary setback. I will not. What? Both Metal and Amy are distracted by the room itself. Ahead of them is the face of the clock, telling the time to everyone outside. On the inside was something much different, though. The gears functioned fine, but there were strings wrapped around each of them. Each of the strings snakes their way between each link, each break, and every gear, creating a web. In the very center of the web, a cloaked figure was wrapped up tightly. As each gear turned, their body twisted and contorted. Their unseen wrists were strangled by the tightness of every turn. There was nothing to be heard. No screams, no moans, not even a single whisper could be heard in spite of the unimaginable pain this creature must be in. Several tubes were skewered into their body, and with each turn a purple substance was extracted and sent to god knows where. Oh my god. This is not... Where is the idol? I have no idea. I WASN'T TALKING TO YOU! <sighs> I MUST FIND THAT ACCURSED ARTIFACT! Amy rounds on metal. Is that all you care about? There's a person clearly in pain. We need to help him. Why should I care? I'm not your darling Sonic. I barely have enough energy left to talk, and you battered me to high hell. Free him yourself. Fine. Amy goes up to the control panel and starts fiddling with it. I have no idea what I'm doing. Are you kidding me? It doesn't help that the entire system is color-coded. Why would that be an issue? I'm colorblind. That... explains a lot. Gee, let's pick on the poor colorblind girl. That sounds fun. Since you're doing squat, how about you give it a go? Nah, it's more fun to watch you struggle. You're a dick. <laughs> Amy raised her hands and backed away from the controls, annoyed. Fine, then I'll talk you to death. So after you fought us as Neo Metal, I wanted to get stronger. For Sonic, I wanted to prove that I could be just as strong as he was. Maybe he would then learn to respect me. It's Little Planet all over again. So then I started training every day, getting some help from Tails and Knuckles when I could, until eventually, I found out about my hidden powers. It took a while to get perfect, but the Black Arms invasion actually really helped me with my training. Just as I thought, Sonic did end up noticing my powers, and he and I have been talking more and more ever since. Wow. That's... a thing... that happened... so cool. So I'm here because of Tails, actually. Recently, there has been massive surges of energy around this area. We're pretty sure it's Eggman. Just my fucking luck. 
Sonic, Amy, Tails, and Eggman are all in Soliana. Who the fuck else is here? Shadow Omega? Tails told me that. There were these crazy powerful artifacts, you know? The usual junk. He, Sonic, and I are trying to get them before Eggman does. Of course, you all are after the idols of Solaris. The what? <sighs> Let me explain. Toss me my bag, will you? Alright, but if you try to kill me, I'm going to give you details for spare parts. Amy tosses metal at his bag. He gets a Chaos Drive out of it and uses it to power himself up again. He then stands up. As you know, the kingdom of Soliana worships Solaris, the eternal sun god. Or more accurately, they used to. But one day his flame vanished. No one knows exactly why. Or if anyone does, I haven't found out yet. But his only access to this world is gone. What was found in search of the stolen flame was instead the idols of Solaris. Supposedly they contain Solaris' power, and that power goes beyond anything the world has ever seen before, including the likes of my metal overlord form and even devil doom. Wait, if the artifacts are really that powerful, how come Soliana hasn't taken over the world? Solaris is a benevolent god, only offering his power to those who need it, not using it for his own gain. The rumors are probably exaggerated by quite a bit, but one thing is for sure. This power is immense. Soliana used to be one of four kingdoms. It laid in the center, but to the west was the Desert Kingdom, to the north was the Ocean Kingdom, and to the east was the Jungle Kingdom. Each of them had an uneasy peace treaty for a long time, but once the idols of Solaris were discovered several decades ago, Soliana took over the other kingdoms. Now they're all part of one nation, Soliana. So if they were able to take over three other kingdoms with just a few artifacts, they would be a big help to Eggman's schemes. That's right. Not only that, but the Doctor could unleash their full power. Those idols alone could easily help him conquer the world. Mm -hmm. Amy stared at the Super Badnik, her eyes boring into his. You're after them too, aren't you? You know a lot about them and you were really interested in getting through that door. Admit it. Yes, I am. But it is clear to me now that I won't be able to do so. Even if I try, you will be there to stop me. And in my unfortunate state, I am in no place to defeat you. So screw it. If I can't have the idols, then I will help you ensure that the Doctor doesn't get them either. You want to help us beat Eggman? I mean, I guess you two aren't exactly besties after you locked him in a closet for like a month. But, I don't know, it's weird. What's with the bad Nixon defecting lately? Couldn't answer you if I tried. Okay, but I've got my eye on you. You try something crazy, and I'll make sure you'll be known as Scrap Metal. I understand. <laughs> Foolish girl. With your help, as well as the help of the Fox Boy and Sonic, I'll get not just one, but all of the idols. And with their power, I'll rule not just the world, but the entire universe. Mind giving me a hand over here? Yes. One second. Metal presses a button and the clock stops entirely. The strings begin to loosen and the cloaked figure falls onto the ground. Amy runs over to the figure while Metal follows behind. Hey guy, are you alright? That's a stupid question. He's probably dead. The least we can do is look on his body and see if there is any kind of clues. What the hell is wrong with you? That's awful! Sometimes in life you have to do awful things to get what you want. The cloak figure pulls himself up. Oh, thank Argus. Ah, good me, you two are really fucking ugly. Huh. He's not dead. 
That's honestly surprising. Uh, thanks for not helping me off the ground, by the way, and just leaving me there to do it myself. Really, really appreciate that. No problem. What happened to you exactly? How did you get here? Better question. Do you know where the idols of Solaris are? There's supposed to be one here. Yeah, yeah, I think I know where those are. Is that why you were put here? Did the people here not want to tell anyone else where the idols were? From a certain point of view, yeah. That's really messed up. I've got to look into this. The kingdom, something about it is off. Ah, trust me, you've only seen Tip of the Iceberg, Tits. That, that's still all the same goes in this injury, right? Tip of the Iceberg. Well, get on with it. We freed you. It's only fair you hand over the idol. You see, I'd love to, but I can't exactly. Well, you're going to if you don't want me to string you back up again. Metal. Oh, don't mix my words. I can still show you the power of an Isle of Solaris, but I can't just give it out to you, you see. And why not? Metal, stop! Because the funny thing is, I believe the idol you're looking for... Stormclouds then orbit around the cloaked figure as little puffs of blue smoke leave his body. Is me. The figure sticks out his arm. At the end of his hand, a large storm cloud appears. Amy steps back, slightly frightened, while Metal takes a defensive stance. Well, thanks for the info, but I think we'll be going now. The idols are living beings? This complicates things immensely. None of this is going to plan. Seriously though, thank both of you so much for releasing me. Yeah, not to be a bother or anything, but since you're still here, you mind doing one last thing for me? That would be a no. If not, hell no. Yeah, maybe we can find someone else to do it for you. Just hear the elevator pitch out for a sec, okay? All you two ugly looking things have freed me from my nap. I can't actually leave this place until someone else takes my spot here. It, it would really mean the world to me if one or preferably both of you ugly little deformed whatever he has could hold this position for me. Not for long, mind you, just an Elon or two. I hate my life. Okay, bye! Metal and Amy are then engulfed in a massive storm cloud. Everything then goes dark.